Awesomeness. All right, y'all, so we are live. Um, let me go back to... Yeah, uh, <laughs> we are live from your personal Uh-huh, oh. yes. Okay, folks, and so we were doing our live conversations and I was using one venue um, and it just got a little bit complicated. And so what I did was shift it over to another venue in order for us to still do our conversation um, in regard to the truth about homelessness. Um, and so now we're just gonna stream from my personal page, yay, um, for multiple uh, ways to stream a conversation. Um, for those of you that are going to be tapping in, give us a minute in order to get acclimated or reacclimated, um, because it's a different venue um, that I haven't used in a while. Morgan, if you could lift your screen up just a smidge in order for us to see the whole you and not the cut off top of your head. Woohoo! Wonderfulness. Um, Sinjin, how are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. Okay. Um, Zani, I see you. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Awesomeness. So what I want to do is to make sure that you guys know I'm streaming right now from my personal page. Um, and if you could take a moment um, and just, um, if you want to tap in, um, share it from my personal page. I actually share it right now with you guys in Messenger um, so that you guys can just share it on the personal page um, in order for, for folks to know. Yeah. So that you guys know where to find it. And I'm so sorry for all the confusion. Um, and then we can get uh, started in our conversation. And once again, for those of you that are tapping in, I super appreciate you guys just being patient um, as we get past all these technical difficulties that we seem to have been experiencing this evening um, when it came to going live. Damn. Awesomeness. Okay. Um, the other thing that I wanna ask you to be mindful of is that when you do share it from your mobile devices or tablets or whatever other source you're using, um, make sure that you turn the volume down. I'm all right. Like I just did. <laughs> Um, for those of you that typically tap in from YouTube, um, I apologize. What we're going to do is take this video, um, this recording, and then we'll upload it to YouTube um, at a later time in order for folks to be able to share it um, going forward. And I don't necessarily know um, in regard to being able to interact um, as far as the chat and different things go. So uh, we'll just see how that goes. So, um, first of all, my name is Tony McNeil. Um, I'm a community organizer with Faith in the Valley. Um, I am um, facilitating this conversation. Uh, what we wanted to do was to bring in some real folks that have really experienced homelessness and housing insecurity in order to raise awareness to um, the truth about homelessness. Um, we wanna dispel some of the false narratives um, regarding housing insecurity and homelessness. Um, and we also want to make sure that folks know that there are intersections here, that housing insecurity actually leads to homelessness um, and that um, and that you cannot address one and not address the other, especially today um, with all that we're dealing with. So um, that is who I am. Um, Zani, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Good evening, Facebook family. Thank you guys for joining us again. Um, my name is Zani Thompson. I'm the community organizer organizing alongside Tony in San Joaquin County with Faith in the Valley. And um, should I just pass it to Morgan? <laughs> I'll pass it over to Morgan. Yo, what's up? Um, I'm Morgan J. I'm not quite a community organizer. Um, on the music end, I do um, bring the community together. Um, I currently work with Live Free and Faith in the Valley. Um, also doing some events with uh, Faith in the Valley and uh, Live Free for gun violence reduction for our youth and different things from the ages between 14 and 24. Um, 
I'm I'm just a, a girl from Stockton with kids trying to make it. That's it. <laughs> Sinjin, my guy. <laughs> going on? What's going on? Um, I'm Sinjin Sears. Um, I guess uh, you could say I'm kind of like a community organizer. Organizer. Um, I'm definitely in the community. Um, 24 hours a day. Um, I work in children's mental health as a mental health specialist. Um, then I also work for the city of Stockton um, in youth sports. Um, I coach um, youth football, um, basketball, all the sports, um, track. Uh, and outside of that, I'm a, a DJ and a photographer. Um, and so just, and I have two kids of my own. So just just try to stay busy and just be around, you know, my community. Dude, you do like a lot between you and Morgan. You and Morgan work a lot of jobs. How about we start there? <laughs> Let's start there. You and Morgan work a lot of jobs. Why do you work so many jobs? Uh, to stay afloat. I think that's the the the, the main reason. Um, to stay afloat, right. um, to make sure everything is taken care of, um, so that um, you know that my that my bills are paid, my kids are they don't want for nothing, and then also myself, um, I can be able to be able to get from point A to point B when I need to. Uh, so, and then I guess for the other reason why I work another job, multiple jobs, is just to be busy, right? Just to stay busy, stay um, stay sharp. Um, Stay healthy. It, it helps me stay healthy. Okay. Morgan, what about you? Why do you work so many jobs? Um, I, I don't know. I guess. Why do I work so many jobs? I work a lot of jobs. I guess it was just accidentally uh, picking up a lot of different hobbies and starting to monetize off of them. That's really what it is. At this point, it is what keeps me afloat. Um, if I wasn't doing multiple things, I wouldn't be staying afloat. One day I'm able to do hair, the next day I'm able to train, the next day I'm able to do a photo shoot, the next day I'm able to do a gig. And that's actually what collectively helps me still struggle to pay my bills, but I don't have a regular nine to five. Um, left the workforce in January. So uh, I'm just kind of going by faith. And honestly, it don't matter at this point if I work a nine to five or if I'm just, <laughs> if I'm just trying to hustle off my dreams, it doesn't matter. And when I was making thousands of dollars a month, <laughs> it's still not enough with the headache. So I might oh, wow. as well do this, make ends meet and call it a day, be able to sleep. <laughs> and so you would say, you said thousands of hours a day. Um, so you two have thousands children. of dollars. And so how, how many, um, what are the ages of your children, if you don't mind me asking? Eight, five, I have a 10 year old. Um, he currently lives in North Dakota. And then I have an eight year old daughter and then I have a five year old daughter. Okay. And so when you, uh, when you were working, um, when you were working the nine to five, was it an actual nine to five, if you don't mind? I guess hell, well. hell no. <laughs> okay. I wish I had a nine to five, but no. Uh, an entry level warehouse type job, um, definitely not nine to fives. I was doing a swing shift and I was working 10 hours, six days. Um, I was making decent money. It was like, okay, cool. For, well, I just didn't have time for, I didn't have time to see my kids. Um, I was still staying at my dad's house the whole time. Um, and it, I, I mean, I thought I would have had enough the whole time I was working. I thought that it would have been enough for me to be able to move. But first month's rent, last, you know, first, last, freaking, you know, um, pretty much everything in between three months to rent. Mm -hmm. And then they definitely, um, I, I got a pass, so I don't have an eviction, but I definitely have a, um, a, a fee. It's, it's a... Two thousand something dollars. It's not a lot, but it definitely holds me up because two thousand, and then for me to pay the first and last month's rent and to have three times the amount of rent at that point, I'm like, fuck it, I'm staying home with my daddy. <laughs> like, so um, you have to pay that two thousand before you can move into an apartment. Mm-hmm. It needs to come off of my my record. 
okay. because without or without paying it, then you like most likely won't get approved for the apartment, right? Either I'm not going to get approved, or they're they're just going to um, want more of a deposit. deposit. So either I'm going to pay them the two thousand, or I'm going to pay the other people the two thousand, <laughs> or or you know. So it's like either way, that money is it's going to come out. Right. It's it's going to come out. <laughs> So, so let, let me um, ask, Sinjin, are you there? Because you look frozen, but you have a beautiful smile in your frozen state. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're multitasking on your phone. <laughs> huh? Uh, I don't know what happens. It's just that you get frozen. But you be frozen in some really positive, you know, poses. Oh, no. I, <laughs> I, I, was, I, was, I was listening to Morgan. I felt everything she was saying. Like, man, man, that, that 200, they, that 2,000, gonna, she, they going to get it one way. Dang. Okay. So, so let, let's, let me, let me go ahead and, and take us back here. So let's go back. We're going to go back in time, you guys, in order to get where we are today. Um, the, the title of this series is called The Truth About Homelessness. So have each one of you experienced homelessness? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sinjin. What your what's been your experience with homelessness? Uh, uh, I can say I technically I've been homeless three different times. Um, the first time was my senior year in high school. Um, my mom, I was living with my mom. It was me, my mom, and my little sister. Uh, my mom, my sister would jump back and forth uh, between my mom and my dad's house, and I just kind of solely. It was a point in time, my and by by by, the, by my senior year. I just, I, I felt that I wanted to stay closer to my mom. Um, my dad, they, it was so many kids staying in my dad's house and I felt like moving into, you know, trying to be an adult, trying to be a man. I felt like, you know, my, with my mom, I wanted to kind of help her out um, and actually help myself out by trying to focus and get through um, my last year of high school. Um, Cause I had some struggles up to that point. So I'm like, you know what? I need to buckle down focus. So I stayed with my mom and kind of helped her with my sister as my sister transitioned back and forth. Um, but within that time, my mom, you know, uh, she was in a relationship dealing with a lot of domestic violence. Um, mm -hmm. That kind of, it, it, it went really bad, really quick. And, mm -hmm. uh, and with that being said, there was a point in time where uh, we got kind of barricaded in the house, but then we were able to finally get out. And when we were, when we were able to get out, um, I wasn't gonna leave my mom. So so that was from, you know, we had to stay in a van, stay in a hotel. Um, it's a point in time that I was trying to go with her and she wouldn't, she she kind of wasn't having it, but she couldn't really, she really couldn't do much about it. And so, uh, so then eventually she just kind of like told me, hey, uh, you gotta go stay with somebody. And so I stayed with, I went and stayed with my brother and his wife at the time, um, and at her parents' house. So it was, it was, that was an interesting time. Um, and so in my, my senior year of high school. So, uh, so that was, that was unique. That was different. Um, another time I was homeless was uh, come back full circle. My senior year in college, um, I, we, we were living in a house, the slumlord, um, just kind of like ran us out basically. Um, so we didn't have a place to stay. Yeah. My senior year, uh, going into my senior year in college, uh, they were trying to run the rent up. They, were, they He was just doing a lot of different stuff. And so we eventually, uh, for a period of time, we had to squat in the house um, oh my God. to be able to try to, one, get all our stuff out because he was trying to just give us a day to get out. That wasn't going to work. Um, so we just kind of had to squat in the house. I remember at times where there was no running water, no no air conditioner. And, and I think, it, I, I want to say it was like, beginning uh, toward the end of the summer. So it was like, it was humid. I was in Kansas. It was humid. It was hot. It was, it was crazy. So we were staying in the house squatting and it's like, uh, it felt like it was 110 in the house, 120 in the house. And so, um, but we had to figure out, you know, how to maneuver, how to find a place. And, you know, there were so many slumlords out there. We went to look at a place. It didn't have a floor. Right. So it was just <laughs> it didn't have a floor. Like literally, when I tell people it was like it didn't have a floor, you walked in the front door and then there was no floor. It was just beams and stuff on the floor and dirt. 
Wow. So, like, it was it was crazy. But that that was it was like it looked like a crack house, right? So uh, but eventually God willing, praying and a lot of hard work. Um after a couple months, we found a place and so we bounced back. And then after I graduated from co college, um, I had to move back home and kind of restart all over again. And then I moved in with my mom sleeping on that sleeping on the couch. And that was that was not they're like sleeping in the couch in a dining room. So no privacy, no nothing. And so it was just it was it was it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. But now moving fast forward to now, you know, I, I, I've overcome that. But like going back to what you were saying is and why you asked um, why I work so many jobs is because I don't want to ever feel like that again. I never want to be back in that spot. So I work so hard to kind of get away from that and make sure and ensure that I don't have to deal with it at a, at, 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 as well as my kids. Uh, ooh, that's one heck of a journey. Thank you for sharing that. So what I want to do, because you and Morgan um, have there so, so many similarities um, and there are some things that we want to lift up in this. So what I want to do is, Morgan, I want to ask you, um, have you, you said, yes, you have experienced homelessness. Can you just kind of walk us through a journey? And I'm somewhat familiar um, <laughs> with your journey, um, you know, because 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 I know you. <laughs> right. Which one? Because I'm like, I, I mean, I, I remember growing up in a homeless shelter. <laughs> okay, so you grew um, up in a homeless shelter. Um, and then I grew up in a homeless shelter. Uh, we were always uh, in and out of different places, different people's houses. At the same time, the market was uh, it was going through a crash. So um, there was also times where we were paying rent and you know, the, the house was um, like foreclosed, you know, like stuff like that, that was going on. I was still a child, okay? Uh, and then grow up and get older. My, my experience growing up, first of all, was always instability. It, it did not matter. I found my stability with my siblings and my mom. That was it. Other than that, a house meant nothing. It meant absolutely nothing because it can come and go. We moved once a year, faithfully, actually. I was used to it. I went to three different high schools. Um, tried to stay at other high, tried to stay at a high school. You know, that was a fight too in itself, going to different schools, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then, not blah, blah, blah. I really am desensitized to a lot of this stuff at this point. Um, and then, um, definitely having got, got married we found a place that didn't work out and um i got to another relationship i was extremely like, hella spoiled but my my ex-husband did take care of the bills and things like that i did help of course um with the kids and on in-house whatever either way so once that was done um everything was pretty much left on me and um that was hard so I was also in a, a, it was first like emotional, you know, mental abuse, turning to physical, the, the, you know, gradual way that it happens. And um, just like losing my place, my stability, the place that my kids, we were there for some years. Um, and at the same time, I had to realize uh, just because systematically and knowing my mom and knowing other people, it just was not my fault. At that point, they were up in the rent. I lived on Kelly Drive. Nothing had changed in the neighborhood, but they were up in the rent. And I had begged them, begged them. I said, I can pay it, but they can't go up as much as they want to with me still being in there. So mm. I had to go. Uh, so at that point, I ended up dealing with this guy. Did not give two fucks about him, excuse my language, but really didn't, but had to swallow. And I am a prideful woman and it's hard for me not to say too much of anything. And I never in my damn life, I would never go back to it. Swallow my pride, shut up and dealt with a damn man while me and my kids were inside of, a, inside of the room. Um, we had a room over there at his place. I was working at Tesla, ended up having to leave the job because I got plantar fasciitis in my feet. And um, it was just hard for me to walk and everything. And so 
at that point, I went to the system. Cool, it's good. I'm going to go housing authority, figure this out. They drag their feet so tough. And because I'm staying at somebody's house, you got shelter. What the hell do we need to help you for? You're not homeless, homeless. Mm. So, you know, um, it's not it's not an urge in it. And even if I explain my whole situation, they don't give a damn. At that point, you're fine. You know? <sighs> so me and my kids and, and some stuff happened at the place to where me and my kids even ended up in a hotel room. I got a two-door drop-top Volkswagen Cabrera with my mini fridge, all my shit in it. And I swear to you, you would not even know. My kids, we didn't skip a beat. Still went to school. I also got pissed off because uh, the dads weren't helping as much as I, I anticipated. Because I'm like, why are me and my kids here in this damn hotel room? Me and my youngest, yeah, I couldn't understand. Because her dad was currently um, the person who raised her. He was in jail. Um, but that was difficult to just stay in face. All right, y'all, this is normal cool. Get up. It's six. I'm going to go to school. You know? Let me pack all the stuff up in here because our room could be taken or I got to go down here. I was working two jobs. I don't know how. I was working two part-time jobs, one at night, competing companies, UPS and FedEx. One of them had to let me go because they were like, you can't work for both. Um, oh. <laughs> I ended up having to connect with some internal people in order to even get a place on Sutter Street. Slums. And I mean... I, I'm not one to complain. You know what, guys, you're good. I need the, the roof over my head, whatever the case may be. The AC wasn't working. At some point, four months before, they even had a bed bug outbreak. Um, he knew that there was bed bugs downstairs. And he was not doing anything about it due to the fact that the lady downstairs didn't pay $40 off her rent. So he said that he was not going to take care of it. So we all ended up with bed bugs. And I seen two in my house and I had never been back. So that was like July of 2019. And um, then I, that pushed me in a position. I lost everything, bed, work, all types of stuff, like clothes, everything. Um, then turned around, had to go stay with somebody else. Had to tell that person, I'm not about to be sleeping with you. Like, you know, just... The stress, like, it was so stressful. Neither one of my parents are, were in a position, they're struggling just like I am, you know? And so it was like, you know, I got my own kids. At this point, that was when my son ended up having to leave. And he didn't have to leave his dad. And it was an opportunity. I can't say he had to leave. I had to push him out. It was an opportunity for my son to be somewhere else and not here. So we was dealing with the school systems, all type of crap. So he ended up moving with his dad because his dad was, um, he was situated. And so that was hard. That was, I could cry right now thinking about it, but that was extremely hard leaving, letting my son go. Um, it's hard now that I don't have a place for him to even come home to. Like even when he came home for the summer, I'm sleeping on the couch and I'm looking at my kids as they're on the pilot on the damn floor. Like this is nonsense. Like this shit is stressful. I can't, if I take one more child, I'm a break, you know. And I'm working my ass off. Um, before I just ended up just being like, forget working. Like it doesn't even. There's no point. I'm stressing myself out. And so I ended up here at my dad's house, and um, my brother was here at first. And so it was my brother in the room, my dad in the room, me and my daughters on the trying to keep it as normal as possible. My kids constantly tell me they want to move. Y'all hush now. You know, I don't know what else to say. Y'all hush, y'all fine. You feel me? You're not missing a meal. You're not missing nothing. You got Papa right here in the house. And the thing is, if I leave my dad's house, he might not make it at this point because the rent and everything is just difficult. So it's like, I could leave. If I did leave, at this point, I need to take my father with me. I'm almost 30. And you get that obligation of making sure your parents are taken care of. And so it's, it's just difficult. So that is my story on just, in my experience on, on being homeless. We will take a deep breath on that. Oh, Sam, how you doing? I'm, 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 I'm all right. I was taking that journey with her when she was talking because I know that feeling of, again, laying on the couch and you look over it and your kids is laying right there too. And you just like, 
Like that's one of the most mm. like heart wrenching feelings to look over and just be like, man, I don't have no, I don't have a place for y'all to go, right? Like, like man, it almost make you feel like you're not doing enough as a parent, like you're failing as a parent, and it's like. And, but but it, you know but in the same sense it's like that's not the you know that's not the case that, that I'm because I'm we 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 doing everything that we can like that, to the best of my ability and like it's crazy it's crazy to hear her say that right because I was in the same I'm telling you I was in the same spot and I'm laying on the couch and I just see my kids and I'm like no this is not and I have a college and I and I, at that time I had a college degree so I'm just sitting there like this doesn't make any sense like somewhere down the line. This, this, it doesn't make any, this doesn't equate. This doesn't make any sense. So I, I know that feeling. Y'all, I, I mean, for real. And I'm, um, I'm, I'm telling you now, like the tears, the tears is just, I've been crying all day. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have been, I've been crying all day. I, literally, I've been crying all day. I've got, on one hand, I have a, a mother who reached out to me earlier this week because, um, she had to move, you know, um, with her children, her school age children, um, because they're selling her home. And so um, she didn't know what to do. She was supposed to be out early in June. I mean, early in the month of July, but she got COVID um, and she ended up in the hospital. And so uh, she got released after her hospital stay um, with oxygen um, to help her breathe. Um, and she called. Um, somebody referred her just to see if there was anything that we could do in order to connect her with resources because she's homeless, been ready to sleep on the couch um, at a family member's house. She was trying to move her stuff into storage while she's on oxygen. Um, and she needed to stop for a second to get her kids in school because they started school this week. Um, you know, um, and then turn around and um, turn in the keys only to come back and get the bigger pieces of furniture and find out that the furniture has been placed on the on the sidewalk and they're about to take her furniture to the dump. And was she behind on her rent? No. Um, you know, was she in violation? No. Um, none of that. The landlords weren't, they're not mean people. They were in their rights, right? They, they extended it and did all they could, but they need to sell their property. This is what they need to do. And we don't know what their circumstances are. So we can't demean them. And you know what I'm saying? And villainize them um, because they are well within their rights. And we have no idea what their situation um, is. These are the days and the times that we're living in. Senior citizen, Patricia, right? 70 something years old contacts us. Why? Because someone purchased a slumlord purchase a unit that she's in um, that is being run by another slumlord. Um, and she's 70 something years old, social security and working to the most, as much as she can without losing her benefits um, in order to keep a roof over her head, trying to figure out what she can do to not get evicted because they need to raise the rent because her rent is too low. Um, you know, so uh, domestic, we've got so many stories that are coming at us. Here's where I want to go today. Um, I am going to share, um, I'm going to share uh, some information. You guys both mentioned slumlords. <laughs> today, I wanted to talk about the issue of habitability. And so what I am going to do is first, I'm going to, um, I'm going to actually share a video um, that uh, with us in order for us to be able to identify just, you know, like, uh, <laughs> what is this uh, thing that we call slumbers? Um, what 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 are our rights? You know, uh, what is it? So I want you guys to bear with me. Make sure you let me know if you can hear this. Uninhabitable. Uninhabitable means that a rental here? property does not Got meet it. the minimum living standards for a home. An apartment is uninhabitable when there are substantial problems with the structural composition of the home, where it is missing an essential service like water or electricity, or there are unhealthy conditions such as the presence of cockroaches, bed bugs, rodents, inoperable heater, leaks, or peeling lead paint. Is my landlord required to make the rental property habitable? In California, a landlord is required to make sure that their rental property is habitable in order to rent. 
printed out, and by making repairs and performing regular maintenance. Tenants also have obligations to keep their apartments clean and use the property for the intended purpose. Does my landlord have to pay for an exterminator? Yes, California law states that the landlord is responsible for providing a safe and healthy environment for tenants. Therefore, the landlord must provide effective pest control to rid the apartment or building of cockroaches, bedbugs, and mice. However, the tenant must cooperate with the pest control. What should I do if a prospective apartment has some problems? It's normal to do a walkthrough with the landlord in order to do that inspection and write down all the problems that are evident at that time. Whether it's in the move-in inspection or separately, tenants should request in writing that the problems are fixed and also to take I stopped sharing the video um, because I'm sorry, I stopped sharing the video because some of the uh, folks in the chat said that it's not clear. What I am going to do is I'm going to drop, drop the link in the chat um, so that you all can take a look at it yourselves um, when you get an opportunity. Um, we, have, we have a lot of folks who are experiencing homelessness and displacement because due to um, slumlords. Um, throughout the Central Valley in particular. And um, what's interesting is in some cases, you've got individuals that are moving into places that are substandard, not habitable, um, because they can't afford anything else. And they won't make a complaint. They're not raising their awareness. They're not saying anything because they're afraid of retaliation from the actual uh, property owners um, that it, are collecting their rent in these circumstances and situation. Um, is that something that you guys um, are aware of or have experienced, Sin? Start with you. Um, I'm sorry, can you, can you say that one last Is time? that something that you have experienced or, or, or aware of? Um, I am, I can't, no, I, I, I have definitely experienced some of that, but I did not, I, 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 would, I was not aware of um, that um, in California that these are that these are laws, right? Like this is a must, right? So that is definitely something I'm glad to see, and I want to definitely um, take a longer look at that um, at that. Um, but I didn't know that. I did not know that. But I've definitely yeah. seen. I've seen. Um, but again, I lived in a different state, so I don't know the. I don't know the restrictions are in that state, but I do know that it was, uh, yeah. So the fact that you didn't know that is actually what most landlords count on. They're, they're counting on you not to have that knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then the second that you come into that knowledge, the next thing you know, they're trying to evict you for whatever reason they can find you. Yeah. That's literally like well, basically what a slumlord is. So Morgan, um, when you were yes, saying that, so when you were saying that, did you know that that um, that you know to not have air and heat, um, that you know? Oh, no, I do. And that was the problem: is that I was completely aware. Is that I messaged him. I was telling him Section A fourteen whatever of my lease says that I don't have to pay you a dime of rent until you have this place up to code. That was the problem with he and I is that we were going back and forth because he wasn't going to get anything done. He was refusing to. And it didn't matter to him. You're going to move out. I'm going to move somebody else in, you know, who's not going to complain about this. And it does not matter who it affects. I bought an AC because I bought like a, a AC to go into my window because uh, and I just wasn't used to living like that. Right. So you purchased your own AC? Mm -hmm. It was like $200, put in the window. Um, and like you said, we tend not to complain because we're like, you know what? This is what we have right now. Again, I was staying in a very uncomfortable situation in a hotel before that. So it was like, okay, I got a roof over my head. I did highlight those things. And I still think to myself, like no lie, 
maybe I shouldn't have complained about the bad butts. I would at least still have my place right now. I at least do it. I literally think these things all the time. Like, what do I, man, if I would have at least just dealt with this. No, that's not a place. That's not something for me to do and to live. That's why, I mean, I wasn't there, but I still am like, and that person is still just taking vacations, living their life, not, not thinking twice about it. The landlord that you're speaking of, is this the 2000 that you were speaking of earlier that you need to pay? Is it owed to that landlord? Oh, no, no. Oh, it's a different landlord? No. It was, Which it was, was another slum. That. that was another slum mm -hmm. and <laughs> that was that was Star Property. Star Property is we all know about Star Property. If you're out here, we can talk about Morgan. Star did we not ourselves. have a conversation prior to this and said no name dropping on? I on, didn't. On, I didn't name <laughs> the other person. <laughs> <laughs> we telling the truth, okay? <laughs> so it was a. But there was times where they where even uh, Star Property was adding on fees about changing filters and they would never come in and change the filter, but it's like $70 a month for you to be changing this filter. So part of that 2000 was added on fees that they have never even came in case. Never, not one time. So is it, what? So there's something else then that I want, I want to share with us um, in order for us to take a look at um, and, and then let's just discuss it. <laughs> So um, are you all able to see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's let's talk about this. So Zani, why don't you just uh, name off some of these things? Zani, you start off with the first five. Broken floors, stairways or railings, faulty electrical wiring and fixtures, including lighting, wiring and equipment, missing or inadequate trash uh, receptacles, visible slash uh, accumulated trash, gas in, Gas is in poor working order and cracks or holes in the floor, walls, or ceilings. So have either one of you guys experienced any of these things? Mm -hmm. Morgan or, or, or Sin? Yeah. Or do you know folks that are experienced? Yeah, for sure, Lee. Okay. Did you experience um, more than one of these things at one time? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Morgan, why don't you pick up where it says blocked or unsafe fire? Blocked or unsafe fire, emergency exits, signs of leaking water or water damage, mold that might affect you, your family, health, and safety, windows that cannot open at least halfway for proper ventilation, um, inoperable or leaky toilet sinking, uh, sinks, bathtubs, or showers, Bathrooms that do not allow for proper ventilation. Is that what it says? Yeah, bathrooms that do not allow for proper ventilation and privacy. Signs of rust in water um, from the tap. Broken deadbolt. Is that what it says? Yeah, broken deadbolt locks on all entry doors uh, and windows without proper locks, poor heating, and air conditioning. Okay, once again, just from the list that Morgan just read, have you guys experienced one or more of any of those items? For sure, Lee. Yep. Bad smells or odor, odor. Ineffective waterproofing and weather protection of roof and exterior walls, including broken windows and doors. Plumbing that is not properly connected to a sewage disposal system for all sinks, tubs, and toilets. Lead hazards. Faulty or broken smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Lack of hot or cold running water. Just from the things that I have read, have you guys experienced any of these things? Yes. Zani, you want to read the last ones? Yeah, where'd you leave off at? Um, lack of cold water and hot water. Okay. Damaged flooring, damaged furnishings, only if the unit is furnished. Signs of insects, rats, or mice, or other stuff. Um, accumulated dirt and dust, chipping um, the paint in older buildings, signs of asbestos, flaking ceiling tiles, crumbling um, pipe wrap insulation, and any signs of hazardous substances or waste and toxic chemicals in the rental unit or property. 
any of those things, you guys, on the last part that he just read? Yes. So units We're should sorry, not. Here. So yeah. you. This is a checklist, you all. Um, that is called. This is called an unlivable checklist. Units should not contain any of the following items. This is from the Department of Consumer Affairs. Yeah, both of you guys have let us know that not only were most of the stuff that was listed on there familiar to you guys, but that you also experienced it not just one at a time, but sometimes at the same time. But the stuff that's on that list is not any of it. It's supposed to be in a, in a livable space. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so it, it's very unfortunate because I want to ask the question also, not only have, have you experienced this, do you all know others that are living in conditions like this right now? Absolutely, absolutely. And I don't even think, I don't even think they even know that they're not supposed to be living in those conditions. Yeah, currently, actually, shoot. Do you know others who are basically doing the opposite of what you did, Morgan? and biting the bullet and just dealing with these slumlords. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Cause even not to put us on blast or anything, even rodents or rats and stuff, we've had a rat here. And even going to talk to them, it's like, why are you dragging your feet? So my dad comes out of his own pocket. He doesn't complain, I'm not on the lease. So at this point I feel like I, ain't got, I can't say too much because if I say anything, they are gonna kick me out. Um, but he's coming out of his own pocket to, to eliminate these things. But I've done the same thing. I've come out of my own pocket to make sure the infestation of roaches that was on Kelly Drive, that I had a, I just had a tab. I asked to fix it and it was come out my neighbor's place. It was going to come over. I had mulch in the back. They didn't do anything. I have to call them out. I have to take the bill. And that was it. You didn't so, deduct that from your rent? What'd you you say, said that they deducted from my rent. Yeah, no. Did you deduct it from your rent? No, I should have. I definitely should have. But this is our property. They weren't finished. Well, at this point now, let's. I mean, let's let's be real. At this point, housing is a scarcity, and if housing is a scarcity, um, then when you start fighting back for yourself, you know what what are the consequences? You know, like, uh, San, what are the You're consequences? You're not going to get the place. Yeah, right. You, the, you, you run to the risk of not having a place to stay. Or you'll run the risk of being able to stay there, but getting overcharged for things that, like she said, that never got done. Or you run the door. Oh, I was a tenant. Uh-huh. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, or you run the risk of doing like what a lot of places do. You get a knock on your door, they'll either, you know, ask you to leave or they bump the rent up. And there's not really much you could do after that. So as a tenant, you feel extremely like, what's the word? Like the, uh, there's, no, there's no balance to the power. Like you guys feel extremely powerless and that the landlords have all the power. Absolutely. They do. And I feel like they can do it as they please. I had a friend who's a homeowner and um, he, just, he was just candidly talking about how he could, um, beautiful home. He has a gorgeous house worth half a million dollars, but he's paying about, you know, maybe like 1600 because he, you know, has been handling his business. He's saying, he was telling me, you know, I could charge this much. They could be paying this rent, you know, this mortgage, as well as my rent at the next place, you know, mm -hmm. because clearly there's no damn cap. It hurt my feelings. I said, nigga, you see me struggling. <laughs> like, you see me as a renter struggling. Why would you do that? I said, you got people like me who don't make nowhere near as much as you do trying to move in a place like this that is completely taken care of. I would take care of the home just like you would, and you would charge me how much? And they think like this, and they think it's okay. And he literally was like, oh, I didn't think about that. 
what the, what? I don't think that they do. I don't think they think like that. I think they're like, well, somebody else will come in here. I can make an extra dime off of it. It's literally a hustle. They don't care about the integrity, mm. the the way it's supposed to be about consumers and, and good customer service and taking care of your home and making sure that they're comfortable as well because they are paying your mortgage. They're doing you a favor. I take it further from what you were saying, Tony, about housing being a scarcity and say that it's, from the way that he was saying it, but your friend, that it's becoming a luxury. Oh, please, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Rather than a necessity, a basic necessity. Huh. So, it's, okay. So what are some of the things, San? Um, so you you work also um, in, um, in the mental health uh, area, correct? Yes. Okay, let's 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 just dive in. <laughs> what are what are some of the um, what are some of the ramifications of not having stable housing when it comes to mental health? Oh man, okay. So like, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so can you repeat that one more time? So I can Yeah, what 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 are some of the ramifications? Like what what are some of the byproducts when it comes to just mental health, mental wellness, um, that um that are associated with or tied into the stress of housing insecurity and homelessness. There's a fear, right? I am stressing because I don't want to become homeless. Right. So I'll live with, oh, I'm trying not to cry. I'll live with bed bugs and rats and and rusty water and and I will I will live in I will live in squalor in order for me not to live outside. What are some of the mental um, issues that come from that? Oh man, that's a whole big old pot of different things, right? Um, so what I've seen, um, people stressing, um, they're, they're, you know, if you go homeless, right? Like if, if, if you happen to be, because I feel like we're all one step away from being homeless, <laughs> right? So having, having uh, mental health um, services, right? You know you have um, things that you have to work on, right? Because you know, we're, we're, for whatever reason, life experiences or or environment, you know, plays a part on plays a part on um, our lives, right? So I've seen people, um, you know, struggle with their own. Um, a lady, a, a woman, struggle with schizophrenia, but then also have to try to figure out try to figure out how to make money to be able to provide for our home, but then also mm. struggle to stay away from being homeless because her family could be split up at any given moment. Because a lot of places, a lot of shelters, when you're, you're if you have a son, right, they won't accept them, right? So mm -hmm. thinking of that, <laughs> thinking of that at any given moment, at any given time, you can be homeless and you can lose your whole entire family. Oh my God. Yep. Okay. Mm. Lord have mercy. Wait, <laughs> because I happened to be homeless and all my children were, were young and my son was only one. So thank you, God, right? That mm -hmm. right. I wasn't homeless with a child that, because what's the age cap uh, for a male child in a uh, family or uh, a, a, a women and children shelter? I don't 14. think it's old at all. I think I think I think it's I think it's what'd you say? It's like 14, 15 normally. Yes. Yeah, it can get as low as 13. Mm -hmm. And and the kids, you know, so like I said, the kid, they don't have to be old at all, right? So you go to a, a, a woman's shelter and your like you said, your 13 year old son has to go somewhere else. He's still a child. Like he's still 
he's that's a baby right like and so having that sit on your mind oh, on man. top of on top of whatever else that you have to deal with on top of being homeless like yo that that's crazy and it's like it, it, and it makes no sense that that's the domino effect right like that 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 makes sense you lose your house and then you lose your kids and then you lose your family like you lose everything yeah. right? then I, anybody else that's a strong person if they keep it together right but knowing me i'm i'm gonna lose i i, I lost my mind i lose my mind and I, i've been talking to different people just during the series um and i'm learning <clears throat> excuse me i'm learning also that a lot of folks weren't struggling with substance abuse and drinking prior to um homelessness and housing insecurity right. zana you're not in your head yeah. yeah, like they until they be, they don't do any of that until they become homeless, because like well for first of all for most of us being homeless is like one of our number one fears, and so like these people are dealing with it every single day. Turning to substance abuse seems like sometimes, I, and for most of them it's understandable, but it seems like the easiest thing to do in order to get your mind off of the fact that this is not your reality that you have nowhere to go at the end of the day. I'm you guys, a, go ahead, go ahead, uh, uh, Sinjin. I met a man. Um, he told me, a homeless man, he told me a story about um, how he became homeless, right? And um, basically, it was one of those unfortunate events of, you know, family just, you know, how our family can be. Our family just kind of goes and do, all, do their own thing. And he kind of like fell between the cracks. Mm -hmm. Never had a drug problem, never had gambling problem, nothing. It just... I know, lost his job and just couldn't bounce back. Mm -hmm. He told me he started doing drugs because it kept him up and it kept him warm while he was homeless. Mm. Man. And I was like, wow. He'd never had a drug problem. Man. Yeah, how many homeless people were able to or develop a drinking problem just because they were started drinking alcohol to stay away? Right. So and so we do know that these are byproducts of homelessness, and we also know that these are byproducts of stress. And we're not even going to talk about the physical stress, the um, that and 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 what it uh, causes on our bodies. Um, especially being so close to the line of homelessness through housing insecurity. Um, so I'm gonna ask you first, Morgan, and then I'm gonna ask Sian, and then we'll we'll wrap up after um, this with a, a wrap up question. How has the years of housing insecurity and homelessness impacted your children? Um. They just don't get to have it. I just, I don't even know what else to say. They they want to be able to have their own rooms and their own space. Um, I've just taken the imagination out of our heads as well as theirs. And they're going to have to, this is it. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. And that, I definitely has affected them. Um, and if I'm being optimistic, it, it brings us closer together. <laughs> no, but <laughs> I mean, it definitely has affected them. That's all I can say. And uh, just not being able to have my son near, I share a room with my kids. We're on top of each other. Um, their scheduling is hard to to really get them set in a schedule and system and have their own clothes around, you know, their own drawers and their own space to put their toys. And I'm constantly going off because I'm like, I hate crap. I'm stepping on toys, but we're all in a room, <laughs> all of us. So um, I'm sure my anxiety has definitely given them a little bit of anxiety as well. So I'm completely aware of that. 
they just aren't able to get comfortable. That's it. And I don't know what I don't. I mean, it sucks. I don't. I'm not about to cry every single time my daughter's like, "Come on, what? You know, I want to have." It's like, "Well, baby, this is it. You know, come on, we we got to keep pushing. We got to keep going. This is what we have right now. You know, God is good to allow us to even be with Papa right now. So enjoy it. You know." And honestly, to be completely honest, if I had the money, if I, if I, if I probably wouldn't, I don't know if I would at this point, all the money that it takes and all the crap that I would have to deal with, with uh, being out there in the world at this moment, I'll take the covering. So, yeah. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. Sinjin, how has this impacted your children? Um, and so, and even asking that, um, do you, do you feel like it's impacted them with school, with, you know, just their interactions, um, just, you know, all of that. Um, and that, that's for both of you guys. Um, but first in how, how has this impacted your children? Um, it impacted them. Um, I think first, um, that I can see it impacts them. Um, I guess it's a, in a in a in a strange way, a good way and a bad way, um, and and I say that because um, they are very humble. Right. It sucks in a sense because they know not to ask for certain things, and that's that's a tough place to be as a parent, right? Like like. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like they know, like, oh, we probably can't get that. So it, it sucks because I, you know, as a kid, you, you, I, I, I have a kid spirit, so I know you're, you want, you want, you want what everybody got, right? You go to school, you see nice shoes, nice this, kids playing the game, be able to go places, <laughs> and so, so to, to, I think I've heard them say one time, like, oh no, don't ask them that, you know. You know, you know, we broke, right? Like, and I had to like, man, we ain't broke, but we broke, right? So it just it, it kind of sucks because I feel like what that does for them is it shrinks their 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 thought process mm-hmm. and and a lot and not allowing them to have huge desires, right? Like I, mm-hmm. I think I think deeper, if you look deeper into that, right, it, it it may shrink their goals, right? Because then they realize like, well if I can't get this, right? Like I'll probably I'm not from I I don't get to see and I'm not I'm not from these places that these other people these people are from. So mm-hmm. it's hard to dream like that, right? Like so it's hard to have those huge dreams and believe these type of things when you can't even get something simple, right? Oh, I, I see you raise your hands. So I <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. I was waving by the zombie because he oh. had to tap out. Um, man, so you guys, this has been like for real, real. <laughs> like, um, and and I, you know, I always have been trying to just, you know, warn folks as we're doing it, you know, um, that these are some real uncensored, raw conversations. Um, this is this is really the truth about homelessness, you know, and housing insecurity. Um, you know, that any given point, any day, you know. Um, so if you, I've, I've been wrapping up with this question, um, every single conversation, if you could have a conversation, Sin, with our city council, um, you know, what is, what's something that you would want them to know in regard to the truth about homelessness um, or do you have a solution you know that you would want to recommend to them just what what would you want to say to them go ahead Morgan go ahead Morgan right I would seriously tell them is this really the example that we're going to be giving to our children is this really what we're doing we're making it harder and harder and harder for my parents finding a place and finding stability to me to my kids like, do you not know what you're doing? Or do they not, do they really know what they're doing? You know what I mean at this point? Mm. Cause it's like, you're setting, you're setting this up in such a way with no guidelines for homeowners. You know, like it, it, it's just, I, I don't, 
I, I definitely would, would stress the question. It sounds so cliche from what we're doing, but how are the children in this? Like, seriously, mm. you're not thinking about them. You're not thinking about the next generation and what they don't get to see in the stability. Like, I never even thought that I could even own a home. Still to this day, I don't know if I can. My kids probably don't think that they can. We probably, it's just not even a thought. We're just going to struggle and try to make it until death. Like, is that what, is that what you guys want us to do? Is this? Is that the plan? Is that the plan? Like, tell me, at least, at least help me understand. Cause, cause my babies really aren't going to have any stability. There's other kids out here too. There's a whole school of children who are struggling too. Even when I went to the homeless shelter to drop off shoes, they need kids clothes. There are too many kids there. Mm. They should be able to have a home, a room, a, a sink that's theirs and a toothbrush and a, and a stepping stove for them to brush their teeth at and to be able to have that normal life and that intimacy with their parents. They got to share their parents with their parents' stress and jobs and all of that stuff. And then the kids have to build up this tough skin and they're not even thinking about the innocent. Mm. So you That's would what want... I would talk to them about. Because yeah. that's I... what it's coming down to. It's not us, it's them. You're making it harder. My kids' kids, I don't even know. Like, I don't want my girls to be like, oh, well, you don't have kids because of, you know, whatever. No, you can't have kids at this point because the government and the system, baby. <laughs> like... Yeah, that's really, really something to think about. Um, and I had, when we talk about generational um, homelessness, the effect on it or what have you, and the fact that you watched your parents struggle and you still watch your parents struggle. Um, and, and now you're struggling only to anticipate that your children are gonna struggle as well. As well as my grandkids. like it keeps us in a hamster wheel mm. and it and and it's crazy um because you know when you grow up they always tell you to do like you know do this do this so you can do this so then you can do that right and i always tell people um i literally did everything that they could ask you to do right like <laughs> I've done everything they asked you to yeah. do right despite despite what I had to go through right like I I'm, I'm not even gonna put that on the table but despite everything I had to go through I did what you asked how is it on the other side of what you asked it is not what you promised right mm -hmm. like I, like again like <laughs> this is year five of me having a college degree and I'm thankful I'm thankful for everything that you know thus far where I'm at Mm -hmm. but how am I still how am I still <laughs> trying to paddle <laughs> what, to not drown right like that to me that it doesn't it doesn't make any sense right like it almost I think sometimes and I and I and I, I am I am so I, I I wish you nothing but the best Morgan because I was so happy that you just said you know I stopped working a regular nine to five right I'm going to stress myself out. Right. And I, I'm so happy that you say that because every day, and the close people around me, they, they, they hear, I struggle every day because I try to figure out, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Because this doesn't make enough, right? Like, this doesn't, like, like I always tell people, like, this is my job that pays most of my bills, right? Right. But that brings all the stress. That, like, like it, it doesn't make any sense to me that, I had, that adds so much stress, but the things that I do on the side during the weekend, I start looking, I'm like, one, this, this preserves my peace. Two, <laughs> if I had, an, if I had enough time to do what I do for them people, for what I do for myself, I could probably make twice as much money triple. Right. But it's like, they put us in a box to where we're fearful to 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 let that go, right? And it's like I I don't like that feeling. I don't like that feeling to be able to, you know, when I walk off. Now so many other elements that I have to worry about. I have to worry about working for myself. I gotta get I gotta get dental insurance. I gotta get uh, 
all this other type mm-hmm. of stuff back me, right? Like I want to, I would like to retire. They make it systematic. I retire. Yeah. Right? So it's like, it's like this weird mm-hmm. thing, but it's, but there's nothing, again, there's nothing that, that backs that. There's nothing. It's like they force you to go work for somebody else to give yeah. you that much, but only that much, that, that, like, and it's that much is not enough. Empty. To take care of your bills, right? Like, Empty promises. <laughs> it's 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 just it just it's 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 mind blowing. It's really mind blowing. So again, that's why I want to teach my kids that at this point, let me be an example to you. I might not ever be okay in this world and live up to their standard, but goddamn it, I'm going to be happy doing what I'm doing. I'm going to show you another way out. Like, that's what I'm trying so hard. Like, again, I'm trying not to just extra cry, but if I could show you a way to at least come out of this systematic world, even if they're living together, I don't care at this point, but do what you'd love to do because going to work, trying to live up to whatever standards that they have us living by, that you're promising this, you're promising that, because it's a lie from the pit of hell. It does not matter. I don't care if you got an education. I don't care if your parents are this or that or whatever. You could end up in a situation at the drop of a hat and they make it difficult. Yes, they add on insurance with jobs. They add on all these different things for later. But then I'm also watching my father who is still working and stressing about paying a copay fee for his eye surgery that you guys are supposed to cover because he's going back to work the day after. And he is still struggling. And the cool part is, yeah, I ain't been sick too much or whatever. I still got my good health, but I could easily pay him the rent. So sorry to say, fuck the system. Fuck all of that or putting my money into a pot that is never going to be in my favor or even my kids. I'm like, no. So they're going to see something completely different. I might not do it from A to, you know, the right way, but hopefully <laughs> they're able to do it the right way. So that they can build for themselves because trusting them is is horseshit. Like it's horseshit. it's not gonna get us anywhere. You Man. should have you should be able to. That makes no sense. You're an educated black man taking care of your kids. You don't hold a gun, you're not doing anything crazy. Like, I don't understand that. You should be able to go find a place, not just a damn apartment, okay. You should be able to go find a three bedroom home upstairs, downstairs with a garage and a backyard to play with your children and still come home off of work at five o'clock and make them dinner and help them with their homework mm. and be able to put them to bed and wake them up and still have a routine and be happy. <laughs> you know, we've gotten so far away y'all from, 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 from that thing, you know, so Morgan, you had said earlier, um, how you, um, um, Oh gosh, what was it that you you, you kind of made light and brushed past this, you know, in regard to uh, you know you were working and doing all of this stuff, um, but then you said you were spoiled. That's what you said. You said I was spoiled as hell because you know your husband worked um, and took care of the bills, and I'm I'm still trying to understand the concept and mindset engine of what it is that she said. You were spoiled because your husband worked and took care of the bills while you stayed at home and raised children. And, and that we have gotten into this society, you know, and I don't want to get too far off the track on this, but we have gotten into a society to where being at home and taking care of your children is really no longer um, something that is relevant or important. I, I, I was not able to stay at home and raise my children. And when I tell you that I had to come off of my job and get on welfare and in order to take care of my four children, that was one heck of a pay cut. I worked myself off of welfare in order to come back home and get back on the system, go to school. I did what you did, go back to school, get degrees. A little world. <laughs> Set an example 
for my children. I'm trying not to cry saying it, you know, because right, this is this is what the system says you're supposed to do. I'm looking at folks and this is what they're laying out to do. Why? Because I wanted a house with a white picket fence and a front doggone yard. I wanted to go and sit in my yard and have barbecues and invite folks over. I wanted to be able to live in one of those areas where you could drive through and it just seemed all nice with the roses and all that different stuff. And I didn't have any clue about redlining, um, and impacted um, communities that didn't have all this. I had no clue. I was always, that's probably what my kids is crazy. Because then I was always looking for a place that was out of the cuts. I wanted to give my children at least an opportunity to go to schools and be around communities that were out of the cuts because I didn't want them to grow up on the concrete. I love the concrete. I believe in the block. You know what I'm saying? I understand the hood, all of that. But I was trying to offer them something different. And I'd be doggone if the system didn't just slap them down and kick them right back in because it wasn't designed for them to be out of it. So y'all, I mean. <sighs> that's, that's crazy that you said that, right? Like I was thinking this whole time is like you said you took a pay cut, right? I think like, as you're saying that like I'm processing everything and I realized, well, I, I knew what I was doing, but with the help of God, it just kind of worked. The reason, another reason why I work so many jobs and do so many th things is because it's an opportunity to be around my kids, right? So I work with kids. So working in mental health, I somehow found a way to convince my job a couple years ago to work with the school that my kids go to school at. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, a day or two out of the week, I'm at my kid's school, right? So, so I, I don't, I don't even know how, I don't even know how I convinced them to do it, but it worked. So now I, I'm teaching a class an hour a day, not with my kids, but I, at least I'm on campus, so I can walk and just kick and peek, take a peek, right? Yeah. Um, um, then also working for the city, I wanted to become a coach, or I mean a referee so that I'll be literally at the same place where my kids are playing. Right. Because I don't have enough time in the day to be able to sit and throw the ball with them or, or, or do these type of things. So I had, to, I had to figure out how to override the system, still be in the system to be able to make time for my day. So the only thing out of doing all of this, doing all of this, I think the only thing that I lose is my self time and sleep. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so, 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 so sorry. The two things that you need in order to stay mentally well and fit and physically well and fit. You have no time for yourself and no time for sleep. I know Morgan ain't got no time for herself. So she looks at her self time as being in the gym. Oh, <laughs> everybody done took that time over. They want to work out with me now. So that's a, I mean, that's the income, but <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> so you guys, one last question. What do you say to your children? What would you say today? to encourage your children or to prepare them um, to not be homeless? How would you tell them to, what would you tell them to do to avoid homelessness? I don't know, can you let me know? Shoot. I think one of the what you what, what would you tell your kids? Mama, tell me. <laughs> Shit, if I knew. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I would say. Um, um, Y'all go first. I'm going to tell you what I would say. I think one of the first things I would tell my kids is uh, trust your instincts. Trust your instincts. Mm -hmm. um, believe in yourself. Um, gain as much knowledge from, not from people, 
from studying um, the proper, I don't know, how, the proper information for mm -hmm. things so that you so that you don't walk around and lack knowledge, right? Uh, I think once I hit 30, um, I'm 33 now. So once I hit 30, I started realizing like, oh, I should have been paying a lot, lot more attention to certain things because now I love information. And I love the fact that now with the information, it is, it's keys. It's keys to unlock things and make things a lot more a lot more easier for me. Um, so I would tell them, that, yeah, you know, dive into information, learn things, um, and 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 don't 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 lean on other people's words. Go seek it out your own. Go seek it out, mm -hmm. study it, and dissect it, and digest it, so that you can be again. Because if you do all of that, then you can trust your instincts. Now you're equipped with everything, so that if you feel like you know what this is the right way, you don't you don't you you'll never regret it, um, and you'll never you'll never misstep. And even if you misstep. It wasn't because you did it. It was because somebody pulled something from you, right? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And so I would tell them to, you know, to trust that. And and I don't believe no matter what they do to make things difficult for you, you will always stay afloat and you will always figure out how not to become homeless, right? Um, um, yeah, just information because I I feel like if you have all of that, then you will not play the the victim card, right? I think it's easier, especially being at this this level, to play the victim, right? Like, oh, they did this or did this, right? Yeah. But the moment that you start playing the victim, you stay there, right? Yeah. And 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 it's hard to climb out because yes, they yes they are completely in the wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> but. There's not being a victim never I, it, it never got gets people it never gets us out right. of that spot. So if we climb our way and keep climbing and once you get that once you get that 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 ball moving, never stop climbing and never look back and never think never think that that can happen again, right? Um, yeah. I, I just would kind of try to put that battery in their back and let them know that when you when you hit the ground running, keep running keep running and you know just just create safety nets all around create create be be smart about the decision right. you make. yeah yeah i completely agree with him i would um the first thing that came to my mind is you know know your opposing team be smart be strategic they study yes study them um know the system um know how to maneuver you just got to outsmart them. There's loopholes. And in order to be mm -hmm. able to find a loophole, you got to be able to read. You got to be able to pay attention to the signs, pay attention to things that are being dropped now that are they're trying to, you know, make an effect for later. So just, you know, I would, I would definitely teach all of my kids um, just to stay on their toes. Also, do not, don't. I tell people that now. I, I get a lot of people who talk to me and are like stressed out. And I tell them, do not stress yourself out. You are in a mm -hmm. world that is against you. Do not be like, I'm a failure. I can't do it. It ain't you all the time. You're doing everything that you can. They don't care about you. It's okay. That's why I don't cry so often. That's why I don't beat myself up. Because I know that, you know what? Even if I just went and got on my knees for the president himself, I still might not have a place to live. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter what I do. So I would just want my, my kids to know, study them, you know, be on the up and up always, and just know that it's not always your fault. Mm -hmm. And we all take losses. And so just to build up some tough skin and get ready. So, um, man, I would tell my grandchildren, um, the same thing, one of the same things that I've told my children. Um, one, I would want them to know that home is where I am. If you get to me, you're home. 
that as long as you as we can get to one another, that we are home. Um, home ceased to be a, a building and it became us. So my kids know that you can get to mama. You can get to mama, you're home. Um, if you guys can get to one another, you know, if you can get to your siblings, you're home. Um, yeah, so that that's the one. Um, the other is don't believe the lie. Laurel. Oh, man. Don't believe the lies. The truth about homelessness is about us reclaiming our narrative by telling our story, our truth. Because when they tell stories, when they tell our story, um, it always is for their benefit. It is always uh, for, yeah. and I'm talking about they, the system. Don't believe the lies. Don't buy into those lies. When, if you do but buy into those lies, for years, I thought it was my fault because the system told me it was my fault. Because sin, they said, if you just do this, this, and this, if you do X, Y, and Z, and at some point I grew so weary and 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 this. This just this thought of hearing folks tell me the formula and then getting frustrated with me. Well, y'all just don't want it because you ain't showing up. You know, if you really wanted it, you tap in, you plug in, you this, that I don't know. It, it, you were the anomaly. It worked for you. Um, and so when they saw that it worked for you, you know, then they embraced you. But everybody ain't going to get to the top of that pyramid. Everybody is not going to sit close to that one percent. Um you know, everybody ain't going to get in there. And so I'm not going to believe the lies that it's my fault. Um, I will take responsibility for what is mine to take responsibility for. I won't own my stuff, but I'm not going to believe the lies. Um, and the last thing, sin and Morgan, integrity matters. Don't lose your integrity. You can have integrity on the street in an encampment. You can have integrity. I don't care if they treat you and act like you're an animal because you're uh, wrapped in a blanket. Integrity matters. Show them the kindness that you would want to be shown to you and treat them with the integrity in which you would desire you to yourself to be treated. If I am going to shame someone, it will be shaming them by entreating them sin in the same manner in which I desire and deserve to be entreated. So I appreciate y'all. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out to plug in um, to this space and to share your stories um, and to lift up your truth. Um, Saturday, I want to make sure that everybody knows um, this Saturday, we're going to um, have our uh, truth about homelessness conversation. We're going to talk to two men who, um, who are experiencing displacement while trying to purchase a home for their family. Yeah, that part, the truth about homelessness. Um, and so they get to lift up their stories why one is having to relocate to an entirely different state, lock, stock, and barrel, because he's unable to purchase a home, purchase a home for his family. Um, and another gentleman will be sharing his story um, and his journey in regard to attempting to purchase a home for his family recently um, and how he ended up displaced with his family um, because of it. So um, we'll see you guys on Saturday morning at 1030 um, while we lift up another uh, story about the truth about homelessness. So I love and appreciate you all. Sid and Morgan hang in there with me for a minute um, as we cap out. <laughs>